In Pennsylvania, the horse racing industry is one of the largest untold economic success stories of the past decade. In order to save jobs, horse racing, and open space, the legislature adopted Act 71, the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development Act in 2004. Philadelphia Park Casino is officially open. That legislation legalized slot machines in Pennsylvania and contained language requiring casino and track operators in Pennsylvania to provide a percentage of slot revenues to a new fund that would increase racing purses, breeding incentives, and health and pension benefits for the industry. The program has been a tremendous success. Pennsylvania has seen an unprecedented level of businesses investing and moving to Pennsylvania. Thanks to Act 71, the horse racing industry now employs more than 23,000 Pennsylvanians with a total economic impact of more than $1.6 billion. Even more impressive, this was accomplished with no taxpayer funds, as the money assessed to casinos is based on their own slots revenues. The individuals who are employed by and benefit from the horse racing industry represent a diverse cross-section of the Commonwealth's residents and businesses. From a trainer to a feed producer, a veterinarian, a real estate agent, a builder, these are just a sampling of Pennsylvanians who rely on the horse racing industry. However, their livelihoods may be in jeopardy if Governor Tom Corbett's proposal to eliminate $72 million from the horse racing fund is approved. From the back of the pack, Mikey likes it. Regardless of how much they love or their passion for horse racing, their livelihoods rely on it. Um, and it would, be, it would be just devastating to, for the state to uh, uh, cripple us uh, like that. We've seen this happen in Maryland. I moved up here in February of 2011 after making some major life decisions. I worked for a practice in Kentucky and Lexington that uh, felt the, the turmoil from the economy. My plan was to start my own business, so I, I saw the momentum in, in Pennsylvania and wanted to grow with an already established growing industry here. And, um, and so I, I, I uprooted and came here and, um, and uh, it's going to be a tough, tough situation for, I think, anybody who moved up here for the same reasons that I did. We are heavily involved in the community. It would change things dramatically for, for us uh, to the point where it may not be, probably would not be, in our best in financial interest, uh, livelihood interest to, to stay in Pennsylvania. According to a Penn State study, nearly 20 percent of the farmland in Pennsylvania is equine related representing more than 1.4 million acres. Since the passage of Act 71, a range of new breeding and horse stables have been created in our state, thanks to a flood of new investment in Pennsylvania. Had it not been for a rejuvenated equine and racing industry, these farms may have been the site of new housing developments or strip malls, not the open space it is today. Stop, reevaluate and take a good hard look at this industry, industry and the growth we have made since the passage of Act 71. Look at the jobs that we provide, directly and indirectly. Look at the amount of money that we provide for the state's economy on an annual basis. Look at the improvements that have been made on the racetracks, on the breeding farms. This is a, this is a green state. Let's keep this a green state. When farms fall prey to financial issues, developers move in. Three to four years ago, we were seeing a lot of interest in horse farms from the racehorse sector. Um, we were getting calls from Kentucky, California. I had shown several of my farms to quite a few racehorse breeders and trainers, so there was a lot of interest. Um, after that, it really had slacked off. Um, it's very, very rare that I receive a call from a racehorse person now. Since the governor has been um, wanting to tap into the funding for the racehorse industry, there's just been a, um, I don't want to say collapse, but certainly a disinterest um, in, in horse farms in eastern Pennsylvania. Horses are found in farms of all sizes. Some are boarding stables, others are breeding operations, but each have an economic impact on the local communities and businesses. Uh, I've had horses for probably since 1978, and uh, one of my trainers said this would be a good area, you know, for a farm in between Chester and Poconos. And I said, you know, maybe we'll do it. And I went out and looked for property and 
you know? I mean, the original policy here was to back the horsemen, and now it seems like they're turning around and stabbing them in the back. Uh, I don't know what it'll do to the farm. You know, it's certainly gonna hurt the business. But it is not just the horse farms themselves. There is over a million acres of additional land that is used to grow hay and grain and produce straw and essential products used in the horse industry. We've been around a, a long, long time and we're hopefully we keep staying around a long, long time. But the horse end of it, especially you know, with supplying the tracks and the breeding industry and so forth is a huge part of our income. So uh, without that, it would, it would just really make it, well, I, I wouldn't need this facility really. I mean, that's just, that's just the long and the short of it. 80% of our sales here is horse feed. We manufacture about 4,000 ton a year. And, and most of that, a good 90% of it is all thoroughbred horses and doing the racetracks, farms, and so forth. Because of the horse industry, we've been able to kind of like a little bit of an oasis in the middle of the desert. So uh, that's, to me, I think that would be incentive enough to, you know, why would you try and kill something that's really beneficial to a lot of people. Smarty Jones is taking the lead. Lionheart tough as nails. Smarty Jones is going clear. The unbeaten colt Smarty Jones is drawing away to win the derby. I kind of feel like my horse helped, helped the whole thing get started. So it's very disturbing to me um, the fact that, that the casinos have generated the money they have because of horse racing. And you know now you have all these people moving their businesses into the state um, to benefit it and, and to continue the growth and uh, you know now they're going to pull the plug on. A lot of wonderful things have been happening to make Pennsylvania one of the top states in racing and I it just fit in with what I wanted to do with Smarty you know I'd always had in the back of my mind that Smarty's home was Pennsylvania and they made it very enticing to me to uh, to bring him back. I. Um, I, along with a lot of other people who've spent millions of dollars in Pennsylvania, I spent a ton of money buying out syndicate members in Kentucky so that I could bring him back to Pennsylvania um, and take advantage of some of these awards and purses that uh, were being offered. And it's, it's really very devastating, I think. As devastating as it is to me, it's gonna be, it's gonna hit a lot of other people a lot harder than it's hitting me. But if this, if this goes through, it's, it's just going to really hurt the horse industry in Pennsylvania. Horse owners in Pennsylvania spend hundreds of millions of dollars each year on trainers, blacksmiths, veterinarian care, feed, supplies, and equipment, improvements to their facilities, and state and federal taxes. For some, the horse racing industry in Pennsylvania represent their entire livelihood and future. We have seven crews and about 60 employees at uh, 90, uh, at least 90% of our work is, is all horse related, equestrian related. And we, you know, we rely on this industry. And if the industry is impacted, obviously we'll be impacted. If there's a downturn in this industry, obviously it'll impact the, the amount of employees that we're able to keep busy and working. And that has a ripple effect all down the line. Uh, you know, their families are affected by it all. And um, you know, the, the equestrian industry in Pennsylvania is huge. Nearly 23,000 jobs are generated from the horse racing industry with employment opportunities for a diverse cross-section of Pennsylvania citizens. If Governor Tom Corbett takes away the $72 million provided by the racetracks and casino operators, the result would cripple the industry. Many racehorse owners would most likely move their horses to other states, causing the loss of up to 15,000 jobs. We've gotten to the point that people are uncertain as to what's going to happen hot on the heels of the budget being released, we find out that New York increases its purses 44%. With a proposed budget cut of $72 million, we look to lose 30% of our purses across the board. That's a 75% that's a swing between here and New York, our neighbors. We finally have gotten to the point where we are a powerhouse in this industry. Pennsylvania is respected now. I mean, we really have a vibrant thoroughbred breeding and racing industry. We have a grade one race at Parks. I mean, we have three, two Breeders' Cup winning your in races. Breeders' Cup is the International World Championships, and two of them, two of them are here in Pennsylvania.
Act 71 now is working as it was intended. It's creating jobs. It is spurring economic investment in Pennsylvania. And it is preserving thousands upon thousands of acres as open space. The long-term impact of these proposed cuts will have a devastating ripple effect throughout the Pennsylvania economy. But it is not too late. The legislature can act to preserve these jobs and the growing horse racing industry by restoring funding to our job creators. Act 71, working for Pennsylvania.